DC voters, I'm Lisa Rice, native Washingtonian, proposer of Ballot Initiative 83. Let's make politicians work harder with two changes to our system. One, let independents like me vote in taxpayer-funded primary elections. And two, implement ranked choice voting to vote for your favorite candidate and rank your backup choices. Candidates need over 50% to win. Flip your ballot and vote yes on 83. Paid for by Make All Votes County C, Philip Pinnell, Treasurer. Today on CityCast DC. For a lot of people, Halloween is about ghost stories. And sure, DC's got plenty of those given its rich history and significance. But do you know about our city's creepy, larger than life cryptids? Mythical creatures that roam our forests and city tunnels. No? Well, producer Ash Durbin is here to enlighten you. Today is Tuesday, October 22nd. I'm senior executive producer Priyanka Tilbe, and here's what DC is talking about. Hello there, CityCast DC listeners. I'm here with producer Ash Dribben. And before we go full Halloween in today's conversation, I want to take a moment and just first welcome any new listeners to our show and also talk a little bit about our mission here at CityCast DC. It's our goal every day to make sure that our podcast and our newsletter bring you the most compelling stories, the most exciting guests, and their best insider recommendations so that you can make the most of this city and also make this city better. Yeah, totally. In the past year, we've interviewed the mayor, we've had three live tapings in different neighborhoods, and we're currently doing a bunch of research for CityCast 6, our end of year awards. It's a lot of work, but honestly, it's fun because we love this city and it's fulfilling to learn more about it and help people learn more about it. And with our fall campaign happening this week, I think it's a great time to remind people why we're doing this and how we do it. And our work is impossible without members. Yeah, exactly. Like, the truth is that producing a daily podcast and a daily newsletter that's dedicated to DC, I mean, it takes a lot of work behind the scenes. There's researching, interviewing, editing. Like Ash said, we also do these live tapings and other events. And so your membership not only keeps us in business, but it also helps us grow and evolve to better serve you, our listeners. So if you've ever felt like you've gotten literally anything valuable from CityCast DC, whether that's a new perspective on a local issue or even just like a great weekend recommendation, will you become a member today? Your support is what keeps us going and it means the world to us. Truly. You can join right now by heading to membership.citycast.fm. That's membership.citycast.fm. Thanks so much to the current members and shout out to people who are thinking about it. Uh, you should do it. We wouldn't be here without you. Absolutely. Okay, let's jump into today's yeah. <laughs> episode, which is a very different vibe. Um, DC's creepiest stories. Unlike CityCast DC membership, I'm really not a fan of scary things, but cryptid stories just feel different to me for some reason. Is that the same for you? Yes. I mean, I think, well, for people who don't know, a cryptid is like, think Sasquatch or the Loch Ness Monster. It's a beast, an animal that exists in folklore, but isn't proven to be real. So it kind of feels a little separated from your life in that like you have to be in the middle of the woods or like in a weird lake to even come across them. You know what I mean? Like it's not going to haunt your house. It's not a ghost. It's not going to show up in your apartment. It's likely not going to like jump out at you in the park or follow you down the street unless yeah. you happen to be... I guess like in like you were saying like certain woods and stuff like that. Right. It's like we barely slash don't have pictures of any of these things. So yeah. it's like where you're probably not going to run into it. But how do you how do you feel about this kind of realm of paranormal ideas in general? Are you like a believer in the Sasquatches of the of the world or or not really? You know, I mean, I guess the two that you mentioned, the like Sasquatch, Bigfoot, Yeti, whatever, and then the Loch Ness Monster, something about those two does, like, they do feel compelling to me. Like, there's just something about a sea monster that just, like, the right. water is so deep. You don't know what's in there. Totally. It feels possible. And, like, same with, again, like, a Yeti Bigfoot-type character in the woods of, what is it, supposed to be, like, northern Canada or something? Well, I've learned that also here there is what? some some no. some realms of, of Sasquatch-adjacent creatures. 
I think my general like policy with all this stuff and including like ghosts and stuff is it's just kind of more fun to believe it's true. Like, yeah. It kind of adds a bit of whimsy. Totally. I mean, especially when you've got names like Goatman and Snallygaster. Like, how can you not be intrigued by those titles? Totally. Well, you mentioned Snallygaster and the Goatman. I think the Snallygaster maybe is DC's most notorious cryptid. I see that. For those of you who don't know, it is a... Beer festival? It's a beer festival. <laughs> there's a museum out in Maryland. There's there's a whole bunch of stuff regarding Snallygaster. It is a dragon-like creature. It has features of a bird. Some say it has features of a goat, the head of a lion, the tail of a snake. Many people say there's tentacles coming out of its mouth. How many heads does this thing have? I know. It's great. There's a, there's a lot of different accounts in my research of what it would look like. I think the main thing is like dragon-like, bird-like, some sort of mammalian quality as well. So there's that mixture. And then the the tentacles coming out of the mouth, which is like the craziest part. For okay. Sure. So a reptile mixed with a mammal with tentacles coming out of its mouth. Yes. It came from German folklore. So Germans moving to the DMV area. The root word is Schnallergeist <laughs> uh, or quick spirit, um, which is like a trickster spirit in German culture. But yeah, reports started in like the early 20th century of this Schnallergeist like terrorizing farms and oh stuff and like swooping down on cattle. Like is this in D.C.? Is this in Virginia? Is it Maryland? Like where was the Schnallergaster or Schnallergeist, whatever? Unlike some of the rest of them we're going to talk about, this one has like more of a closer to D.C. proper kind of territory. Uh, I think the early stories were kind of more Western Maryland and like even close to like West Virginia. But um, it really took a hold on like DC proper in the early 1900s. Famously, President Teddy Roosevelt wanted to hunt the Scallygaster. No. Allegedly, allegedly, uh, there's reports of him postponing a safari trip in 1909 so that he could hunt the Scallygaster. Oh, man. Teddy. Teddy was really out there in his parks with the hunting. Well, something about 1909 as well was like the year of the Snallygaster, I guess, because the Smithsonian offered a reward for the hide of the Snallygaster after a series of newspaper reports describing encounters with the creature. Wow. See, maybe if we lived in a time like that where yes. there were like newspaper reports of cryptids like this, I would be more of a believer. Like clearly people thought it was a real thing. That's definitely part of the theme in my research here is like so many print articles about just like seemingly obviously fake <laughs> creatures. Yeah. I wonder what it was they were seeing that they thought was part dragon, part mammal with tentacles coming out of its mouth. That's yeah. a stark image. A lot of them you can kind of like tie like, oh, that was probably like a bear on hind legs or it was this, but like a dragon with tentacles coming out of his mouth. feels a little great. A lot of people say like the journalistic integrity that we have today maybe was a little bit lacking and they were looking for uh you know, some some hits in the paper, and that could have played a part. It also has, like, a weird racist past in the 30s where it was, like, described to only attack black men and specifically those who deserted the Republican Party in the presidential election and voted for Roosevelt. Yeah, that sounds like propaganda if I've ever heard of some. So with a grain of salt, surely, I mean, I think that goes without saying. <laughs> but <laughs> Might as well say it anyway. Is there anything that was rumored to have been able to take down the Snallygaster or like, like, yeah, do, do these cryptids have rivals? Is that a thing? I did not think it was a thing, but the Snallygaster has the Dueo, which is another cryptid that inhabits these lands, allegedly, which is a wolf-like creature with dark fur all over its body, a long bushy tail, and a dog-like nose. However, it stands like a human and utilizes its four legs and arms, and it's about six feet tall. So think about... Werewolf. Yeah. It's werewolf, basically a werewolf. Basically a werewolf. Something funny about this one that I got from Reddit, like, so you kind of get the... That's kind of like maybe the modern day <laughs> folklore <laughs> accounts is like the Reddit r slash cryptozoology. Wow, this um, Reddit slander. Yeah, but 
one person added that a lot of accounts say it has a large fluffy tail resembling that of a squirrel, which to me kind of adds to the realisticness of it living in our area. I feel like we're we're kind of a, a squirrely area. And that just kind of made me imagine it a little bit more like seeing, I don't, you know, I don't, I've never seen a wolf out here. I don't know. You know, like the, the, if you add a squirrel element, it kind of brings it back down to earth a little bit. At least this one is one where I can see people seeing something in the wild that they thought was a werewolf or I guess a, a dwayo rather. So it feels a little bit more realistic that there would have been accounts of it. And maybe it also felt like it was something that people needed to believe in to counteract the Snallygaster, since that is a right. An if you're afraid of the Snallygaster, yeah, yeah, yeah. At least I don't know what a large wolf man is going to do against a flying <laughs> dragon with tentacles. But I mean, this one, like first reading of this, to me, it's like okay, bear on hind legs, you know. You're yeah. out in the woods in the 1800s and you see a bear on hind legs and you're like, what is that? But in 65, in the Frederick News Posts, a man named John Becker had an account of kind of squaring up to, oh to, to the dueo. He said it was as big as a bear, had long black hair and a bushy tail and growled like a wolf or a dog in anger. And as it got closer, it stood up on its own hind legs and attacked him. Again, sounds like a bear. But <laughs> this guy seemingly thought it was not. And then there was a couple more sightings throughout the 70s in a similar wait, wait, hold area. Up. Go back to Becker. Did he, I mean, obviously he made it away. Like, how did he get out of there alive? Becker fought the creature until it ran into the woods, leaving him, his wife, and children in horror. Deciding to remain anonymous under the alias John Becker, he filed a report with the local state police. Um, that's hilarious. That is, that's <laughs> really funny. Yeah. That... Something that we think is supposed to be able to fight the Snallygaster was defeated by a mere mortal. I'm also just imagining the police 911 call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, dude, it wasn't a bear. It was a dueo. Uh, this is also, I mean, it's a long time ago, but it's not that long ago, like 65. I don't, that kind of. Yeah. I mean, that's within living memory. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Let's be real, lawsuits are not fun. But with Christopher Nace and the trial lawyers at Paulson and Nace, at least they're a little easier. Paulson and Nace is a DC law firm in every sense of the word. It was founded here in 1979. Partner Chris Nace is a local who cares deeply about the DC community, even serving on the board of the local branch of the Living Classrooms Foundation in his free time. Nace and his associates, Samantha Peters, John Reese, and Maya Perry handle medical malpractice, wrongful death, and other complex injury cases. And they don't just settle every case. They'll go to court. They'll fight for you. Paulson & Nace has even been recognized as one of best lawyers' best law firms. So if you have been hurt or lost a loved one because of someone else's mistake or negligence, call Paulson & Nace for a no-obligation consultation. Visit www.paulsonandnace.com or call 202-463-1999. Say goodbye to rent. Kite House, one of DC's best-selling condominiums, has an exciting new announcement. You can now own with no money down, thanks to a grant program to assist qualified buyers purchasing at Kite House. In addition to no money down, Kite House is offering interest rates, buy-downs, and new pricing. Kite House is part of the parks at Walter Reed. It's a super walkable neighborhood with a Whole Foods nail saloon and charmery, plus year-round festivals, markets, and exercise classes. One-bedroom pricing starts in the high 300,000s. Two bedrooms and two bedrooms plus den are also available. There's an open house every Saturday and Sunday from 1 to 4. Visit www.kitehousedc.com incentives for more information or to schedule your tour. Hey, Andy McDaniel here. I'm Chief Creative Officer at CityCast, which means that not only have I been a part of creating the podcast that you hear every day, I've gotten to be a part of starting 12 other CityCast podcasts around the country that each sound totally different from this one. Now, it would make more business sense to make one podcast that we just published everywhere, but that is not what CityCast is about. CityCast is a national network of local podcasts. The team that you hear every day lives here, loves this city, and works so hard to reflect the issues that matter most to your future. 
But making a unique local show only works if local listeners like you show up to support it financially because it matters to you. That's why I'm asking you to become a member of your local CityCast. When you go to membership.citycast.fm and go through the super fast and easy few steps to become a member, it helps guarantee that we can make this show for as long as you need it. It's a relatively small act, but it has a huge impact on this show's future. Become a member of your local CityCast at membership.citycast.fm. That's membership.citycast.fm. And thank you. Okay, so we've done the Snallygaster and his or her there, I suppose, mortal enemy, the Dwyo. How many more have you got? Yeah, so I researched a ton, but for the sake of time, I just got a couple more for today. I love it. Okay, hit me with the next one. This other notable one is the Goatman of PG County. You can read my article on our website about it if you want to learn more. Goatman stands about six feet tall with the torso of a man and the legs of a goat. So think like evil Mr. Tumnus. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. He's kind of described as like a hermity type figure. Uh, and sightings are scattered throughout PG County, mainly in Greenbelt and Clinton. And I think the kind of the part that makes it scary to me is that he's said to guard Governor's Bridge in Upper Marlboro under the full moon and like, you know, guard Whoa. that bridge against passersby like or whatever. Goat man meets troll. Right. So like if you find yourself your curiosity peaked by this, you can wait for the full moon and, and head out to Governor's Bridge and see if you come across him. But um yeah, this one maybe gained quite a bit of steam comparable to that of the Snallygaster, but it was it was a little bit later. The first like murmurings were in the thirties. But then a bunch of articles in the 70s started coming out about it. One family blamed the goat man for killing their puppy in Bowie, Maryland. There's reports of it attacking a car. People seeing him with an axe, which is terrifying. These ones gained enough steam where like, you know, the, the story kind of snowballs and people start rumors about where he came from, what his origins are. One of the origin stories is he was the result of an experiment gone wrong at the Beltsville Agricultural Research Center. And that gained so much traction that they officially denied the reports in 2013. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God, that's so recent. I read the article where they denied it too. And they were like kind of pissed off about it. It's like, relax, (laughs) I cannot believe we have to address this ridiculous thing. Yeah. This feels like it's got the makings of a movie. Like maybe like move, move aside Wolverine. Yep. It's time for Goatman. Yeah, there actually is a movie about it. It's a slasher film from 2013. By all accounts, it looks really bad, but it's just called The Goatman. I think you can rent it on Prime. Perfect so. Halloween time watch. Okay, so like most of these are, you know, cryptids that exist out in the woods or in more suburby rural areas. Is there anything that's like DC proper, you know, like really in the city? Yes. And this one kind of... I shouldn't have asked this question. I regret it. Yeah. This one feels the scariest because it's the closest to home in that it's in D.C., but it's also the closest to home in that he resides in the tunnels of the Metro. This is the Red Line Metro Monster who has gained notoriety more recently than the rest of them too. So it's like, it's a, it's a new cryptid we're looking at here and a new, a new development in the cryptid community. Someone tells a story about riding the Metro home very late at night, sitting in a seat right up next to the conductor. And they're the only person on the train and the conductor is chatting with them. And then offhandedly, the conductor just mentions a monster living in the Metro. And obviously the person is like, uh, yeah, excuse what? me. <laughs> and he said it looks a bit like a tree, lots of spindly protrusions that aren't exactly limbs. It also has a distinct central trunk that these branches snake out from. What? However, the creature is pale white with almost human like skin. And he couldn't say much beyond that, but imagine like a big, wiry tree man but made up of like metro wiring and just like junk it seems like wait so yeah okay hold up is this just like a bunch of wires in the metro like you do see wires along the side of the tunnels right is that all we're talking about well the guy claims and there's a couple more accounts scattered across the internet as well of him seeing it like walk and then it also says it has uh you know a red flash 
that looked like eyes. So uh, allegedly it's moving. It's on the move. Oh, my God. I can't believe this story takes two things that I love, which is Metro and trees, and makes them both horrifying. Totally. It's on the red line. So if you are on the red line late at night between Friendship Heights and DuPont Circle, allegedly that's like the his realm. That's his oh, lair. Oh, Lord. That is where our producer lives, within that yeah. range. Julia, look out. <laughs> um, I also found a 2017 article that was like an official Metro report where they said the tracks were covered in felt like layer of human hair and skin, which is one gross, gross. two. That's so disgusting. Uh, a fire hazard for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but three is like, is that the origin? Uh, now I'm kind of starting some origin stories, but like, is there some weird technical biological thing going on in the Metro with all this <laughs> human hair and skin coming together with all the junk and wires in the Metro and creating some human and some crazy scientific process. Yeah, yikes. I think you're <laughs> going to have a year between now and next Halloween, Ash, to research this and do a deep dive investigation and report back. Totally. And if anybody has seen the Metro Monster or has any leads on Metro Monster lore, Please let us know. Okay, well, one last question before I let you go. Of all of these, which one feels the realest to you? Oof. It's got to be the Metro Monster. No, I don't no. know. <laughs> I vote Goatman, both in terms of the many accounts that exist and also just in terms of vibe, it feels the most possible to me. I do think that that research lab did something shady. The fact that they denied it. Makes it more suspicious, does mm -hmm. it not? Exactly. It really does. It really does. We're looking at you, Beltville Agricultural Center. Okay, well, Ash, thank you for doing this research. Best job ever, am of I right? Of course. Happy Halloween. And a reminder that our fall campaign is underway. Become a CityCast DC member and get good feelings and great perks. Go to membership.citycast.fm right now to join. And if you're already a member, thank you. We really couldn't do this work without you. That's all for today here on CityCast DC. If you enjoyed the show, tell your friend who is the biggest cryptid believer you know. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye.